Hi, my name is Jamie Fortuna, and today I'm going to be leading you through a warm-up and stretch routine. These are great exercises to use when getting ready for a rehearsal, an audition, or to just keep your body moving while at home. Make sure you push yourselves, but don't be afraid to press pause, grab a drink, catch your breath, but then get back into it. Hopefully you'll have some fun, break a sweat, and learn something new. So, let's get to it. So go ahead and start with your feet, shoulder width apart, toes out. You're going to breathe in and out, bending the knees, going down and in, really warming up the body. Keep going, breathe in. it's really important for us to have a strong core so we can make sure we can support the weight of the drum. So we're gonna do a couple more core exercises on the ground. If that last workout was enough for you today, that's totally fine. These are exercises you can use in the future to again, help build up that core to support your instrument. So we're gonna start on the ground. You're going to put your weight into your right arm. We're gonna be on our right side. Feet are gonna to be together. We will do these uh, in sets of 10. You can do them in sets of eight, 10, 12, 16, um, whatever will push you, make sure you get a good workout in. But today we'll just do 10. 
Again, we're going to start with our feet together. We're going to pull our knees up to our chest and extend those legs back out. Then the next one from there, we'll do straight legs going all the way into a pike position. Then the next one, we'll let that bottom leg stay off the ground, letting the top leg open and close to the bottom. Then the next will be scissor kicks, alternating feet forward. And then from there, you're gonna pull that top leg in and over and just work the bottom leg, yeah? And again, we'll do them in sets of 10 for today. All right, here we go. Make sure you breathe and push yourself to do the best that you can. Starting on the right side, knees and feet together. Five, six, five, six, here we go and walk. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, straight legs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Top leg one, bottom leg off two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Scissor so kick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bottom leg, top leg over, up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice job. We have another side. Here we go. On the left side. Make sure that you're getting an active stretch in so we're not just kind of sitting here but we're actively working our muscles stretching ourselves and trying to increase our flexibility and range of motion <laughs> sit up nice and tall you're gonna drop the head down to the right and other way left Take the body over and forward to the left and back up other way to the left and forward around and up. Switch the legs up other side. Sit up nice and tall. Do it again. Head goes down to the left. Other way. 
bring the legs out in front of you. Stretch them nice and long, point those toes, sitting up on those hips. Good. Now flex, pressing those heels forward, pulling those toes back. Still lift it up out of the ground. Very nice. Now reach forward and think about taking your chest towards your knees or towards your legs. Don't think about taking that head down, but nice long back, pulling yourself down. Stretch, reach those arms up and over, grabbing the back of your feet. And roll up. Pull that right leg over on top of the left, crossing, and hug that knee tight to your chest. leg, extend it out, and take it all the way behind you. So you're kind of in this fourth position cheerleader sit, and then you're going to press your weight onto that front leg, extending the back leg out directly behind you. Good. Really feel a nice stretch here. And when you're ready, walk your hands out. Pressing that back leg a little bit further away from you and feeling a really deep stretch in that left hip. position. If this is a little bit too much for you, you can pull that back leg around, close it off, and it'll do the same idea. Yeah, it won't be as opening for the hip, but you'll be able to stretch that front leg still. And take your weight forward on top of that leg, so again, chest towards your thigh. lifted up out of the ground for this first one and then you're going to walk those hands out pushing that back leg a little bit further away from you feeling a long stretch from your fingers towards your toes Take that back arm, 
If you need to stretch a little bit more, don't be afraid to hit pause and take whatever you need. Make sure you grab a drink of water and then get back onto this video and we'll start talking about some dance basics. All right, now that we're all warmed up and stretched, let's talk about some common dance positions that you'll hear a choreographer or visual instructor reference while in block. The first thing we should talk about is the difference between turnout and parallel position. So if you've taken geometry before, you know parallel are two lines equally distance away from each other, going the same direction, and they're never going to cross. They're always going to be equal and separate. Yes? So for that, our feet are going to do the same thing. They're going to be directly underneath us, a hip width apart, also about a fist width apart. Toes are going to be going forward. You're going to think about the inside of your feet creating those parallel lines. So not so much the outside of your foot because that's going to naturally have a curve towards your pinky toe, but the inside of your foot from the big toe all the way back to your heel should be parallel towards each other. And again, right underneath you. This is first position parallel. Yeah? To find first position turn out, there's a couple ways you can do this. From here, you can just think about turning your heels in and letting your toes naturally open up to where your turn out is. Or if you don't know what your first position turn out should feel like, put your feet all the way together in that first position parallel we talked about, but this time think about your toes and heel touching, and then let your weight drift back, rock back uh, towards your heels and let your toes come up. And then as your weight's back, let those toes come up and out and open up. That's pretty much gonna take you where to, that is pretty much gonna take you to where your first position turnout is. So again, you got first parallel, and then you have first position turn out. Yes? Good. On this one, you're gonna think about heels being together, really nice long line all the way up, squeezing your inner thighs together and toes are going out about to the 45. And that's first position. Then from here, you're gonna think about taking a step out with your right foot a little bit further than hip width, almost like shoulder width apart. And this is going to be your second position. And check out, we should still be in turnout here. With this, you're gonna to wanna to think about your hip bones going directly forward. And again, you're showing off the inner arch of your foot all the way up to your inner thigh and lifting everything up out of your hips. This is second position turned out. You can also do this in parallel. So again, toes going forward, think about the inside of your feet being those parallel lines matching each other. And again, about shoulder width apart, so a little bit further than hip width. Second position, parallel. Cool, so go back to that turned out position in second. From here, think about closing that foot, taking your heel to arch. My right foot is in front right now, left foot is in back. Both are still turned out, so my toes are pointing out towards those 45s. This is going to be third position. It's not something that we use a lot, but again, you might hear a choreographer or visual instructor reference this. This is third, and that's gonna be heel to arch. You can also do that on the left side, so picking up the left foot, placing that in front. This is your left third, yes? From here, fourth position, you're gonna extend that foot out in front of you, um, about like a step apart, and you're gonna think about that front heel being in line with that back heel if you were to close it in. Here it is to the front again. Again, feet are still turned out, going out to those 45s, a little bit of a step in between. Weight is gonna be centered here, so watch that it's not behind on that back foot or in front on the front foot, but directly centered, yes? This is fourth position. And again, you can do it on the right side, pulling that other foot around. Again, making sure heels are in line with each other. Feet are still going out to the 45. Headlights, also known as your hip bones, are both flashing forward. Yep. Good. Then from here, you can close that front foot, taking your heel to the top of your toes on the back foot. Again, toes going out towards the 45. Thinking about closing in those inner thighs, lifting up out of your hips. This is fifth position on the right side. 
Difference between third and fifth is your heel placement. For third, heel will go to the arch. For fifth, heel will go to toe. And again, you can pick up that left foot, pull it around to the front, make sure heel to toe, still have that turnout, hips still forward, squeezing those inner thighs together. Again, watch your weight is in back here or in the front, directly centered on both feet. And this is fifth position on your left. And those are common dance positions that you'll be standing in. And again, you'll hear choreographers reference while teaching you. So now that we know the basic ballet positions that we'll be standing in today, let's go ahead and start learning the plie exercise. Now plies is another dance basic term that you're gonna hear instructors use while again teaching choreography or throughout block while cleaning. So to do a plie, let's start in our first position turnout. Again, heels together, thinking about squeezing those inner thighs up, spiraling the belly button in towards our spine, tucking our pelvis under, so we don't wanna have like this curve in our back. We wanna think nice one long line. So pulling that pelvis under like I talked about, you really wanna make sure you're engaging all of your core and lower body throughout this exercise, while also lifting up out of your hips. So to plie means to bend, and we're going to bend our knees. First off, you wanna make sure that your weight is equally distributed into both feet, and you're gonna be able to move your toes around, but you really wanna think about pressing the balls and uh, heels of your feet firmly into the ground. From here, you're gonna think about pushing your weight down, that pelvis down towards your heels, and as that happens, your knees are gonna drift apart. It's really important that you make sure your knees are going directly out over your second to third toe area. You do not want your knees to be inside of those big toes, like over your arch, or going back on the outside of your foot, but instead making sure that they go directly out. That's very important, or I was gonna do some wear and tear on those knees later on. So make sure, again, find that first position, weight equally distributed, you're gonna press your weight down, and those knees are gonna go open up to those 45 corners, just like where your toes are pointed. Now again, make sure, engage that core, tuck the booty under so you're going directly down. You wanna watch so you don't pinch those shoulders forward or stick the booty out, but you're directly straight up and down. Good. From here, we're gonna take two counts to go down, and we're gonna do some arms with it as well. So arms are gonna start in this first position prep, down below, um, making a nice circle position. Fingers aren't touching, but close to each other. You're going to go down, arms will come up, one, two, to first position, just below tabletop. Again, they should be circular, fingertips just about to touch. We're gonna to straighten the legs, open the arms up, three, four, good. Do that again, five, six, straighten the legs, seven, eight. Very nice, now do another demi plie, one, take the heels up, two, straighten the legs, three, heels down, Four, then you're gonna reverse it, releve five, going down to that demi plie, six, heels down seven into that first position, rise up eight. Very nice. And to count wise to go in music, I believe we'll tom you out with our right foot, seven, eight, or eight and. Yes? Then we'll drop back down into that plie again, but this time in our second position. So double check that out. Again, knees should be going out over those toes, really opening up those inner thighs. One, two, sorry, straighten three, four, repeat it, five, six, straighten seven, eight. Good, you're gonna plie one more time. One, heels, two, up, three, down, four, stretch, five, six, seven, and tongue do eight, close third, eight, and. And then to go into third position, you're gonna pull that right foot in, again, closing off your heel to the arch. You're gonna press that weight down, knees going out, one, two, straighten, three, four, down, five, six, up, seven, eight, and one, heels, two, three, four, reverse, five, six, seven, eight, squeezing all the way back up. Then from here, we're gonna go seven and eight and. Down on the and, press one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, heels down, come up on the and. This time we're gonna shoot that, uh, sorry, left foot out, 
finding our fourth position, eight and. Yeah, so that'll go um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and. That'll be quick. Yeah, now we're in our fourth position. Arms go back down. We open one, two. Really making sure our weight is centered here, especially in that fourth position. Now that we have space between our feet, we're going to naturally want to kind of put our weight back into the uh, right foot or too much into the left foot. Make sure it's directly centered and hips go straight down. Still making sure we're tucking that pelvis under. On this position, it's really important that those knees are going out, that you're not letting that back knee drift in, but over those toes, yes? You go down one, two, open three, four, down five, six, up seven, eight. From here, we're gonna plie one, heels, two, three, four, five, six, seven. From here, you're gonna strain the legs and round and jump around eight and. So you're just gonna make a little half circle from that back foot, the right, find a point, let those toes go out. Think about letting your hip go down. If you had shoes on, your shoelaces are pointing towards the sky. Also going through that second position, pull it around to right fourth. So now my right foot's in front, left foot's in back. Also double check here that those hip bones are going directly forward. Don't let them open up to the side. Really pull that back hip around. Excuse me. From here, we'll go down again, plie. One, two, three, four, five, six, up seven, eight, and one. Heels, two, three, four, up five, six, seven, and from here, I'm gonna put my weight onto that back foot, find a point with my right foot, close heel to toe, finding right fifth position turned out still. Again, double check those hip bones are still going straight forward. Then repeat it, one, two, three, four, five, six, up, seven, eight, and one. Heels, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're gonna put the back heel up, eight, close into the front, eight, and. Last time on the left, double check, heel to big toe, headlights, everything straight forward, weight lifted up by those hips. We go down on one, up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. Heels, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and finish nice and strong. We'll just finish in that left position or fifth position. Something to think about before we do this, really make sure you fulfill all the counts. So don't just go down one and hold two, but really make sure you're stretching or really pushing your weight down into the ground, one, two, and then stretch the legs, three, four. Taking all two counts to go down, all two counts to go up. Yes, one, two, three, four. All right, so now let's try music and see how it goes. If you need to, don't be afraid to press pause, work on this a little bit with just counts, and then when you're ready, try music. All right, check that you're starting in that first position, heels together, suck in those inner thighs, spot on the belly button in, tuck the pelvis under, really make sure you're lifting up out of those hips, and make sure you breathe. Six, seven, eight, and one.
back to the plie exercise. Again, if you need to, press pause, work on it, visit this video again if it's something that you feel you need to keep developing, and just really make sure you're giving it your best every single time. Next, we're gonna talk about tendus, which is something you probably saw me reference in this exercise, but now we'll talk about how those work, and then whenever you visit this video again, you can really focus on those tendus. All right, now let's talk about tendus. We're gonna start in our first position. Again, make sure heels are together, closing those inner thighs, belly button spiraled, pelvis tucked under, lifting our weight up out of our hips. Again, making sure our shoulders are pulled back, lifting our chest and focus open. For this one, we're gonna keep our hands on our hip bones. This is one, just to like put our hands somewhere, nice clean line, but two, also so you can feel your hips and making sure that their orientation is correct throughout this exercise. All right, for this exercise, we're gonna start with our right foot. To do a tendu, you're gonna think about pressing that working leg and that heel arch, the whole inner foot forward and through the ground. So really making sure the whole foot stays connected as you press out. Then when you can't do that anymore, you'll notice that your heel starts to lift off the ground. And then it's just the ball of your foot hanging out and pressing into the ground. Then from there, you're going to pull those toes and curl them under, creating a full point to where just like your second big toe are touching the ground. That is a tendu. And then you're gonna pull that foot back in, connecting it, toes, ball of the foot, then the heel all the way back into that first position. To tendu means to stretch. So you're thinking about stretching that working leg out, finding that point, and then pulling it back in. Yes? And really making sure, I keep saying it, that you're working and using the ground. So I'm pressing my weight into the ground, and then when I can't keep my heel on it anymore, that's when I find that point. And then just reverse it to come back in. A couple of things are important to think about. Watch that you don't put all of your weight onto that standing leg. We're naturally gonna shift our weight over just because that's how our balance works, but you don't wanna make, you wanna make sure you don't sit into that hip, yes? Instead, think about lifting up out of it. Another thing, you're gonna wanna think about a crossing motion, so feeling the squeeze in your front legs versus going out, what we think is like naturally straight in front of us, that makes it look more towards the corner which whenever we start going to the second position will just confuse things. So again, you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, that your heel almost pulls into that arch whenever you close, but that whenever you do it in context, it actually looks like you're going straight forward with that tendu. So if you need to, again, pause, take a second, just work on that motion of that in finding the tendu and pulling it back into that first position. If you have a a student ID, a library card, something that you know is flat and hopefully don't wear any numbers off like a debit card. Um, you can throw that on the ground and you can practice doing a tendu with that where you push it out and then pull it back in. Because your foot should stay connected to the whole entire ground, you should be able to slide that card out and then bring it right back into that first position. And that's a good way of like testing that you're really working the ground and that tendu. Okay, so that's the whole idea of the tendu and how you do that. Again, that one is just out to first position. We will also go out to our second position, which again, if we think about our turnout, our toes are naturally going out to the 45. So for our second position tendu, that's also going to go towards our turnout. So kind of to the 45. It's not gonna be directly out to the side because again, nobody has that perfect tendu. So then if you're pulling it in, see how my feet are like in opposite directions. This is like the corner and those toes are going to the wall. That also changes my hip orientation. So if I'm in first position, I wanna go naturally towards my turnout, yeah? And with this, you're gonna think about the heel being down, still showing off the inside of that foot. If you had shoe, uh, yeah, if you had tennis shoes on, those laces would be pointing up towards the sky right now. And that is a second position tendu. Still doing the same mechanics of pushing the foot out, keeping the heel connected until I can't anymore, and then finding that full point. You should be able to lift your foot off the ground and place it back down. There's no weight on it. So I don't have my toes out and I'm pressing my weight onto the ball of the foot. I have a full point and let just the big and second toe are touching the ground. 
and then you reverse it, pulling it back in, heel connects back, first position. And that is a second position tendu. And then you can also do a back tendu. So for this one, we kind of talked about that crossing in the front. It'll be the same idea in the back, crossing the back leg just a little bit, so it makes sure it looks like it's going directly behind us. If not, it'll look like we're going more towards the corner, and we want this to go directly behind. Checking out our hip orientation, still lift it up, not sinking our hips into that standing leg, but really lift it up. On this one, you're gonna still wanna think about turning out, but instead of letting your heel go up towards the sky, shoelaces down towards the ground, you're gonna think of that turnout. Your shoelaces are kind of going up and out to the back corner and heels trying to drop and spiral down. Yes? And this is your back position Tom do. So that was on the right side. Try it on the left side. Going front, finding that full point, pulling back into first, out to second, and close and back, and close. And then stretch it out, yeah? Because we're gonna be working these legs a little bit more on these tongues, because we're gonna have a whole exercise to go with them. So again, if you need to, pause, take a second, just work on the mechanics of the tongue, then when you're ready, come back to this video and start learning the exercise. All right, now let's talk about the exercise. Again, starting in that first position, turned out, hands on hips, Belly viral button in, engage the core, lift up out of those hips. Our right foot's initiating, going to the front. We're gonna do a slow tendu, out one, two. You're gonna flex that front foot, pulling those toes back, pushing the heel forward, three, four. Tendu, five, six, close, seven, eight. Then we're gonna do three quick tendus, out one, close, two, three, close, four, five, close, six. From here, you're gonna pull that right foot up, toe to the knee, my right knee going out to the side, think about my turnout, and this is called a passe position. Again, you're probably gonna hear choreographers reference this a lot, so I would get comfortable with this. You can do both turn out and parallel, yeah? But this is passe on the right, and then back down, eight. So again, that's gonna go out one, two, flex three, four, time to do five, six, close, seven, eight, quick, one, two, three, four, five, six, up, seven, down, eight. And that was to the front. Now we'll do it to the side. Out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, same thing. Up seven, toes are gonna go to the side, just kissing the knee a little bit. Press it back down to that first position, eight. Good, now to the back. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, up, seven. This time my toes are gonna be on the back side of my knee, pressing down three, or sorry, seven, eight. Good, shake it out a little bit, just halfway through. Let's do a little plie in between there, so we went down eight, plie, one, two, straighten, three, four, then left side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, close two, three, close four, five, close six, pick up seven, toes in front of the knee, down eight, out to the side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, close two, three, close four, five, close six, toes to the side, up seven, down eight, to the back, one, two, take all two counts, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, close two, three, close four, five, close six, toes to the back, seven, down eight, plie, one, two, three, four, and that's the whole exercise. Now again, if you need to pause to just work on that with counts, please do so. If you're ready to move on, let's try a music. Alright, here we go. Check that starting position. Heels together, toes out, pull the inner thighs, start the belly button, lift your weight up out of those hips. And for that plie in between, make it eight counts. Down for four, up for four. Five, six, here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, six, up, seven, out to the side. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. Three, five, six, 
job, guys. That's the Tondu exercise. That's something you're gonna revisit again and make sure you're working on and making improvements because that way, whenever you go back to the plie exercise, you can really focus in on those tondus and really making sure you're going all the way through that point as you go from position to position. And that is also something that you're gonna see a lot in choreography or just in visual movements in general. So good job again. And then the last thing I wanna to touch on for today are different variations of lunges. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna talk about for today are the different variations of lunges that we can do. Again, this is another basic dance move that you'll see used a lot in choreography or even while playing and having your drum on. It's not a very hard move, but you wanna make sure you execute it correctly. So thinking of having that drum on, the first one we're gonna talk about is if we were playing, our shoulders and hips need to stay to the front. Go ahead and think about being like in a second position so both feet should be turned out. Take that right foot and step it out really far to the side. For this, we wanna think about our left leg being long, really straightening all the way through the knee. Right leg, toes should be going out. Again, knees should be going out over the toes, not drifting inside to the inner uh, arch of the foot or going back, but making sure that knee is pressed open and it's going out towards our turned out position. Again, we have to keep that drum in mind to keep shoulders and hip orientation to the front. Also, watch that you're not letting those shoulders drop forward because then our drum will tip forward. We want to make sure those are back, staying lifted. So, this would just be like a turned out lunge to the side. Yeah? You can also do it on the left side. So, setting that left foot out nice and long. Really making sure that that knee creates a 90 degree angle. So, we should be going straight down into our ankle. Not going past. So, I create like this super sharp angle. Don't want the knee to go past the toes. You want the knee to go straight down into your shoe if you were to have a shoe on. Again, making sure that back leg is nice and straight, keeping the drum in mind. Cool, so that's a turned out lunge. You can also do the same thing, but this time, taking your hip and shoulder orientation to the side. For this one, you can do this a couple different ways. You can pull the back heel up, so then you're in more of like a parallel lunge. If you were to have a drum on, you would want to think about opening up that front leg a little bit to accommodate for the drum. Yeah, some instructors might even have you turn out the foot to open up that knee a little bit more. And you can also do the same thing, turn out that back heel, pressing the foot all the way down. This hip is going to naturally open up a little bit more, but it creates that same shape. Yes? And again, do it on the left side, so you would find that left lunge, and then take the heel up, pressing your weight down and back, making sure you still have a straight leg here, and then turn to the side. And then again, if you need to, you can turn out that front leg, open it up a little bit more to accommodate for the drum, and then you can also spiral that back heel down, still lunging towards the side. Yeah? Okay, then the last couple ones we'll talk about will be a lunge with a forced arch. So for this one, you're gonna kinda go into that same shape we were just in this last time, heel off, but this time, take that knee down. So then your shin is cre uh, almost parallel to the ground. And then your foot, <clears throat> you're thinking about forcing your arch forward. It's called a forced arch position. So again, pressing that knee down, still having a 90 degree angle in the front and pulling that back heel up. And then you can do the same thing on the left side. Pull it in. You can even go from that lunge position and then pull that back foot in a little bit, drop the knee, and there you go. It's a forced arch position. Again, that's something you'll see choreographers use a lot. Great job today, guys. I hope you learned something new and had fun while doing it. Next time, we'll learn a dance piece so you can see how these moves work in choreography. Make sure you stretch between now and then because you're probably gonna be a little bit sore. You might have used some muscles that we had in a little while, but that's a-okay. Again, just make sure you stretch and take care of yourself, whatever you need physically. And I'll see you next time.